What's up? Let's talk about bluing olives. Yeah? Hey, I'm Hopper One. We're gonna talk about bugs. So betas is what I, the term I use for subsurface. You'll hear blue wing olives, or the hatch, or it, in general, as what we're talking about is the blue wing hatch or the blue wing season, I guess you could call it. But when I'm fishing subsurface, using the scientific name of betas, and so that can cause a little bit of an issue because people hear betas nymphs, but then they hear blue olives. And so that can get a little confusing for some people. And so anytime I'm referring to subsurface, below the surface, fishing nymphs in a nymph rig, I'm going to be fishing a betas nymph. And so if we're fishing um, above the surface for adults, we're fishing blue wings in that case, or BWOs. I am going stonefly, golden stone, slim shady purple, and then a dark olive sniper betas on this rig just to see what they're eating my go-to rig usually on the Arkansas this time of year which is March is usually stonefly caddis larva and mayfly nymph uh, betas generally that'll dial you in really quick as to what those fish are eating whether they're on caddis or on stoneflies or on mayflies so we'll see what today what they're up to all right so Picked a place on the river where I think there should be fish, and I think there should be um, fish either eating stoneflies, betas nymphs, or caddis. And we're trying for, for the betas nymphs today because that's what we're trying to show for the bug of the month of March. And we want to just see if they're going to be eating any of those betas nymphs, which should be moving around right now because that water warms up as the sun gets higher and warms the water, those betas nymphs will start moving around a little bit more. And, in anticipation of hatching a little bit later in the month. Um, generally what we're looking for is on days like today where it's bright and sunny, you'll have those beta snips drifting through the water column as they're moving around. Not necessarily hatching this early, but getting ready and they're still growing and they're still finding those spots where they want to be. As they drift, those fish will intercept them and eat as they see them coming down. So that's what we're looking for today, not necessarily a hatch, the days you want to be out on the water looking for a hatch is a little bit later, March into April into May. And what you're looking for are those cloudy, kind of snowy or drizzly or rainy days. Those are the best days for the hatches of blue wings. And meaning you'll see the adults a little bit more and you'll see the actual hatch happen as opposed to just fishing the nymphs subsurface. So that's what we're looking for. We're picking a piece of water, this nice run through here where you'll have some of those fish moving up, looking for bugs. You have some nice, a nice ripple up here into a nice long run. Now, as they want to, they move into the faster water, looking for bugs of choice for the day. And with this warmer weather that we're having, to get some of that warmer water temperatures, which triggers those fish to start eating a little bit more. 
And what I got on, I got the Stonefly and two, two Beta Nymphs on my rig. Kind of your Euro style setup. Just, just kind of running through here. Depending on time of year, this again, this is just getting into the springtime where, like I said, those fish might move into this faster water looking for uh, those bugs as they're starting to move around a little bit more, specifically stoneflies on this river and beta snips as they get, get going. And so that's what we're looking for, is just to try to see if those fish have moved out and are looking for food in this a little bit faster water. All right, so I moved down a little bit just to get into a little slower water. First thing in the morning, you might want to approach that slower water as opposed to the faster water, just because those fish maybe, if that water warms up, they'll push into the faster water, but the water has to warm up a little bit more. For, on this river, it's a lot of fun fishing, what I'll call the Euro style or tight line or tension rig, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can definitely throw an indicator rig on this water. And that's what most people do. And you can still run your three flies. This one, I, I'm running three flies on this system. I'm just trying to get it in three different levels with my stone fly being on the bottom. But what I want to do is I want that stone fly to be on the bottom. And I want those two beta snips to be a little bit higher. So that anchor fly is that stone fly. And that's just hopefully towards the bottom and gets those fish that are down lower looking at that. Also takes those two smaller flies down just a little bit. So the disadvantage of this is that you have to change flies if you need to fish deeper water, if you're not heavy enough. The advantage though, you don't have an indicator on there limiting how deep you want you can go. So you can just drop it deeper as long as you're heavy enough and you don't have to adjust as much. I go a little bit heavier on some of these. I think that's the same size. I'm not super heavy though. Or even a light colored Pat's rubber legs would be a good a good option for today yeah as the I, I like to go on the stone flies the yellower colors on it because that's gonna be the the lighter colors gonna be maybe a little more prevalent not using that. just a tiny bit more weight that's what I'm lacking is the really heavy stuff. All right, so what happens if you're fishing and you're changing tactics, fish just aren't eating? You could, as I did here, could add more weight and try to get deeper. Like I know this is fairly deep on this side, so I gotta make sure I'm down deep. Put it again. Put it in their face. Offer it to them. Now again, I'm running the three beta snips. If they're looking for stone flies today, or they're looking for caddis, I might not have what they're looking for. But I'm gonna assume that they have been seeing beta snips. So as you can tell, it's at waist deep now, roughly, almost waist deep. So that means we gotta get down. Slower water on that far side. Assuming those fish, if they're not active in the faster water yet, they might be holding in that deeper stuff still. But you have to adjust to the depth. That water, what if that water is cold? It's probably about 40, maybe 40 right now. Water temp, we are about 39. So that's still pretty cold. 39 being coming out of the you know early morning. Like I said, if, if we're really looking for those fish to wake up, you know, you want that 42 or somewhere around there. As the day progresses, it'll, it'll get up to that 42, 44 degrees on a day like today where it's supposed to be in the 60s. So still early and that water's still cold. Going deep. You can't catch them here, deep stuff. And I'm not awake, but a lot of weight. Pick a bottom area right there. That's deep. I'm deep and I'm not. I'm ticking bottom, then I'm. So, 
one thing that you want to look at when you do have a hatch is where to fish dries, where to fish the adults. So a lot of this water, you're not focusing on any of this fast water out here. You want to focus on these edges, such as straight up along this seam right up in here. So anywhere where those adults get pushed out and those fish can hide, in, in, or uh, not hide, but they can hold in that slower water, they'll be looking at this type of water right here. Um, across the river, so down here in these pockets that are slower water, those bugs will push out and hit to the side. So you'll run into uh, some, some fish sitting in some of those side pockets where they have access to those bugs coming down, so let's say a bubble line or a foam line coming down. And those bugs will sort of push to the edge. That's what you want to look for when you're looking for those adults, first of all, and then where the fish will be eating those adults. So that's, that's the type of water you want to focus on when you are throwing those dry flies. So we get a, a sample from a shallow riffle, a lot of rocks, and really quick, just looking at this, see a lot of bugs, a lot of betas. Those are the ones that are kind of moving around the most in there. And you get a lot of different variety of food in here, actually. You got a midge larva here, that guy right there. So you got your midge larva. The betas are the ones that are squirming around, swimming around, trying to get back in the water. Um, little small stone fly here, probably a yellow sally. This guy right there. Nice little stone fly. So I'll put him in the bucket there. And then these guys right here, most people uh, would assume those are caddis larvae. From the research I've done on this river and these bugs, uh, I believe it's a water snipe. So it's a little bit different than a crane fly, it's a little bit different than a caddis larva. It's kind of in the middle, right? So common caddis patterns work for something like that, or oversized midge patterns as well. You do have the bug of the month right there. You got the uh, beta snip. That guy right there, kind of two of them. About a size 20, one jumped off, didn't like us. But you have that guy right there. So he's just a real streamlined, dark mayfly. What we're looking for in, in March are those wing pads to become kind of dark. That indicates that they're growing and that those wing pads are mature and that they're gonna, they're gonna eventually hatch within the next month or so. So that's kind of what you're looking for there is those darker, can't really tell there, but they get really dark on the backside. So. They are known or called, you know, they're in the, they're swimmers, so they, that's why they're kind of squirmy and once they're out of the water, they wiggle around just like so. so that guy's back in the water. Crane fly larva. That guy's a nice one there. I'm gonna put him there. There's a few in here. Another one right there. So those are big, big bites. And here's another big, big boy. And another part of one, but look at that. The size of this guy. Last month we had, what was it, leeches, not crane flies, leeches. And there are quite a lot of, uh, there's quite a lot of the uh, beta nymphs in here. You just kind of look and see, and see them all squiggling, squirming around in there. They're the most, most active because they are the swimmers. So that was a pretty good sample of what becoming active. So we're not quite, quite there yet with the, in the middle of a hatch time period. We're a little bit early, but there's plenty of plenty of betas. There's a light colored one there, really light. So no stoneflies in that sample other than the small one. Yeah. There's a bunch of betas here. So these are not fully mature. They're getting there. But they're uh, that's kind of what the fish will see. They'll see a little bit larger size as we go. So that's the Jedi Master. Probably size 22 there. So those those betas are probably 24s right right now. So they got a little bit more growing to do. I'd probably recommend a size 22 for everything um, year round, especially in the tailwaters for for beta snips, and as well as the uh, blooming olive adults. Size 22 is a good good size to start with. 
But what we're looking for is that streamlined body, as you can sort of see there. Then, a little bit of legs, the legs are swept back on the, the natural. If you throw a little water on them, you might be able to see them. But that's what we're looking for, it's just that thin body, thin profile. A little bit of a tail, some legs to for an added benefit, and then the uh, wing case on the back side is going to be dark. That imitates those dark wing pads when they're fully mature. Alright, so uh, just a couple bug options as far as what we're looking for betas wise. We have a lot of we have a lot of options. Uh, blue wing olives also for adults. We'll quickly talk about that, but just a nice fly box that you can have with uh, a variety of mayflies. You can have a fly box with uh, plenty of options. Your standards to start with that most fly shops carry, your number one choice probably an RS2. Uh, imitates a nymph and a merger. Works great. Gray, black also is a great color. And then within that family you have the mercury, you have the uh, like CDC wings, you have the uh, sparkle wing, which is another great option, which something like this would be the sparkle wing with a little more, a little bit bigger flash on that wing. Foam back emergers, those are great for kind of during that emerging stage of the, uh, the hatch when those nymphs are kind of drifting downstream, not super deep, and uh, near that upper third of the water column. That works great. That little white post doesn't, it doesn't float it necessarily but it helps to suspend it somewhat and it gives a, a can almost think of it as a hot spot for those bugs for the fish to see other options Jedi Masters those are my patterns different colors so I like olive that that makes uh, you know imitates those beta snips really well the emerger stage of just like a CDC emerger CDC loop wing those are good to have as well for that certain stage pre-emergence and you can also fish those off a, a dry as a dropper uh, again going back to your small size really small size 24 RS2s you can flip over this page you get some options again my slim shady in just some different colors different sizes different profiles all these right here uh, Jedi Masters as well this is more a larger size represents a PMD for later in the summer PMD version right here. This being your, your Betis or Blue Wing Olive version with the foam kind of splitting. A split wing is what that imitates. And those are good to have, again, when those fish are super specific. Say like on the tailwaters where they get a little more specific and they want to eat those uh, certain stages of the emerging insect. And then again, some purple stuff. Um, right here you got the purple Slim Shady. A um, lot of options. Bar mergers are another good option, uh, but if you go to the fly shop, you're certainly able to go and ask for um, ask for some help, and they'll be able to help you with whatever you're looking for. Um, even if you don't know what you're looking for, they'll they'll be able to, to get you uh, set up with a box or at least a few flies just to be prepared for uh, that situation from the nymph to the emerger. So let's look at some dries. I think I have some here real quick. Parachute Adams being one of your uh, best options covers a lot this one is a nice little bluing olive thorax done that's something that I prefer to fish uh, during the hatch when the fish are rising so if you have something like that on and as long as you can see it that's the biggest biggest deal is being able to see those flies then you're gonna do well if they're eating on the surface so again parachute atoms this is a thorax done big tall wing also works great for trichos and we'll cover those later down the road. Then you have other parachute patterns that, that you can pick up and that you can toss and uh, as long as you can see it that's the biggest deal. So just make sure again you have some of those dry flies on hand that way when the fish are deciding to eat the adults on the surface that you'll have those and be prepared. A little bit of frog's fanny or something, some, uh, some powder. Uh, like loon dust, those are good to have. Powder those up, that way you can fish those in the surface. You're gonna have to retreat them after you catch fish, or if they start sinking, you're gonna wanna add some of that powder to them, so. We were out today on the upper Arkansas River, and uh, 
it was a tough day. Um, not a lot going on, and there was a lot of uh, snow on the edges. Uh, really bright sun sunshine today. Just not nothing going on, and that happens. Again, you got to be prepared to fish different conditions. Water started out super gin clear this morning, and as the day progressed, it did warm up, but also that water got off color just a little bit. So depending on that situation, you know, the fish will respond to that. In the free stones, they seem to uh, respond to that harder than they do in the tailwaters. Um, so you just got to, uh, you got to keep fishing it. That's what we did, kept fishing and fishing, changing up a few things here and there. Um, but it, it was really, really, really slow today. So um, that's normal. If you fish enough, you, you've had those days and uh, you come back tomorrow, it might be way better. But um, yeah, we had fun, it was good. Saw some uh, good samples of those of the betas nymphs and you could, that's what keeps coming, that keeps you coming back is that you can come fish this and have a great, outstanding day in the future. That's the fun about fishing. So you never know what you're gonna get. You may have a great day, you may have a really tough day. But it's all fun. And that's what we had today. So um, thanks for uh, checking out the bug of the month, which is the bluing olive for March. And uh, we'll continue doing these down in the, the summer with other bugs and other people. So thank you for tuning in. We don't have a net. Put it in your mouth and close it. Feel uh, something hit it. I'll set the hook. <laughs> 